Okay, we're talking about uh, deflation, numerical factorization. A number of you have asked questions about what this deflation means and how it works, and isn't it the same as synthetic division? Well, in some sense, it is very similar to synthetic division, uh, numerically identical to synthetic division, except synthetic division applies only to polynomials, and uh, we are using we are dealing with very general functions here. So what we have is uh, the situation of a plot here. And uh, we're looking at the sine of pi x, which has zeros at the integers. So what we're going to do now, uh, note that epsilon is 0 here. Uh, we'll, we'll bring that up in a minute, what that means. Uh, we're going to look at the graph of the uh, of the sine pi x, and then what we're going to do is divide by x minus one. So effectively, what we're going to do is remove. We're going to remove uh, that root right there at one. And what we have is this function. This is uh, this function here uh, is is the uh, this function I'm tracing out here is uh, the uh, division of the sine pi x by one of its roots and you see what's happened here is that this root has been removed and it's a perfectly nice point now okay and it won't affect it. the uh, convergence by Newton's method or another method will not go to that root again if that is a root you found. Now what we're going to do is uh, remove another root. In this case, we're going to remove, let's take a look, we're going to remove the root uh, x minus 1 and, uh, and 2, both roots 1 and 2, and you can see in the picture here that uh, the first function uh, above here is now in red, and the second function with two roots removed is blue. So that is how you actually deflate a function by dividing out its roots. And of course, the root goes away. Now, what's this epsilon about? This epsilon has to do with the numerics of the whole thing because we're not actually we're not finding actual roots; we're finding approximations to roots. So let's suppose that our tolerance was uh, one one thousandth, and and that's as close as we have found our roots. So we start with our sine function, and that's the same. And now let's do our deflation with that error in the root. Now what you see here is something kind of important. You see almost what we had before, except you see this little spike here, where there is essentially a root near uh, 1. It's like x. Uh, it's 1 minus 1,000th, and the root at 1 is still there. And so in fact, hopefully, you won't get caught up in this little region here. This little region. Um, here, where uh, there's absolute trouble for Newton's method, and you will go to the root 0 or the root 2 or one of the other roots. OK, I want you to see that. This is the fact is you're doing a numerical deflation, and you're looking at the result when you have an error. And numerical analysis is full of errors. Now let's take a look at what happens when we remove two roots, both with, this, with error. Now you see we pick up uh, spikes once again. Here is that spike we looked at above, which was blue. And now we have two spikes, one at the root 1 and one at the root 2. This is what your numerical algorithm will see as a function when you do a numerical deflation. OK. That said, what we want to do now is look at the theory. Now here's the theory. It's called uh, numerical factorization. And we start with a function and we find a root x1. And assume for convenience it's the actual root, right down to the zillionth decimal point. 
then that's going to be called the deflated version of the function and it's deflated by the one root. So we're actually dividing by the factor and if you had f as a polynomial and did this division you would have the same result as having done synthetic division. Okay, so that's the simple case. Now suppose we have found k roots then we take the function and we now divide by the product of all those roots and that is the factored function uh, factored by those roots. Again, if f was a polynomial, that would be equivalent to doing synthetic division for each of those roots, one after another. So this is what we're doing, we'll be doing numerically as we find the roots, as we find the roots, we will be removing them first the one root and look for a new root and then after we found two roots we'll remove the two roots by deflating by two roots and after we found three roots we remove the three roots by deflating by three roots okay so each time you find a root you're going to be working with a new function that means your function routine has to be a little bit more robust and it has to accommodate the fact that you will be dealing with a deflated function and not the actual function okay although the actual function forms a basis of it so in Newton's method what we need are the a function itself and the derivative and here I've taken this kth deflated function and what I'm doing here is finding the derivative of it and it looks pretty complicated there but it's not really that complicated when we start doing some uh, algebra on it. Uh, let me point out that this uh, expression here, i equal 1 to k, x minus xi prime, is the derivative with respect to x of that whole product. Now we're not actually going to have to do that whole thing because it all reduces to something quite simple. As you can see right here, there's the product and here we're doing the derivative of it and uh, we simply use uh, the product rule for k products. It's long, it's tedious, it's boring, and here it comes. It's pretty simple in the end. It, the derivative of that huge product is the product itself multiplied by the sum of the reciprocal factors. That's all there is to it. it you do a little algebra to get there, but once you're there, that's it. Okay, so we have, we have, we now have this term. We can compute that term and we can compute that term. Those are all computable and using the derivative which we have programmed in and the function which we have programmed in we can compute this deflated derivative. Okay, so let's move on and do the arithmetic. When you uh, plug this in to here, okay, and you plug uh, the product part in here and do the uh, reduction. You see with this square it's going to cancel that and this square is going to cancel that. So what we wind up with is in fact a rather simple formula for the kth deflation. It's the original derivative minus the original function times the sum of these reciprocal terms. It's x minus xi. That's all the roots all the roots you found up to this point. After you have found the kth root, then then you'll be working on, uh, after you found the kth root, then you'll be working, or the k plus first root, you'll be changing this. So each time up, you're dealing with a new function, a new deflated function. And then the whole expression is divided by our product. So what do you need to do to program this algorithm? Well, it's not hard. First of all, you need to have your derivative here. Uh, let me get that. Your derivative and your function. Those you already have. Then you need to compute the sum of these reciprocals. And finally, you need to compute the product of the factors.
So it's the sum of the reciprocals of the factors x minus xi and then the product of the factors x minus xi and assemble them all into this formula. And lo and behold, you have the formula for the derivative. And up a little bit here, So it's all on one page. You have the formula for the deflated function and the formula for the de deflated derivative. And that is how to do numerical deflation. Now what's tricky about this is that when you look at the, the program, you, you have to build into the fact that every time you find a root, you have to store it and after you store it, when you do your function calculation for computing the next step of the uh, Newton method, you need to compute this new deflated function and the new deflated derivative each time. So in this way, you have to imagine that you're dealing with a changing function and the function is changing according to how many roots you found and where you found them. Uh, now for you Maple fans, I do want to show you what we have here. I want to show you the deflation steps. This is this. First of all, we have to have an array that's going to store our roots. We have to specify the maximum number of roots we might want to find. Um, and what I'm, I'm going to show you is inside the calculation here, we have this piece of it right here. This is the part where you can see I'm computing the product of the factors. It's where I am minus the roots, and I'm producting those up. And here I am computing the sum of the reciprocals of those factors right here. And then to compute my new f value, I simply substitute in my x, my x naught, that's where I am, and divide that by the product. And for the derivative value, I compute the function once again minus the derivative times the sum of those reciprocals divided by the product just as the a formula we covered uh, states. Now the rest of the stuff in here is a little bit tricky because bad things can happen when you're doing deflation. And so you have to do a little air trapping and somehow you have to detect when you found the last root. Like if you say up here I'm looking for five roots but you give it a cubic polynomial well, what's going to happen? After you found the three roots of the cubic, it's still going to look for more. So somehow there has to be a little detection in here that there aren't any more, and it'll stop the iteration. That's some of the programming uh, aspects. This particular code is not very robust. I produced it rather quickly. I do have a very, very good code, but it's written in Fortran, and it's not exactly translated back into Maple. But these are going to be parts of the things you'll work on for your lab. So that is the idea of numerical deflection.